and we're doing the coin change problem. This is under HackerRank, dynamic programming, and it is medium difficulty. Let's see if I can do it in 15 minutes. Uh, you are working at a cash counter at a fun fair, and you have different types of coins available to you in finite quantities. The value of each coin is already given. Can you determine the number of ways of making change for a particular number of units? I think they mean by like, uh, uh, like money, basically, uh, using the given types of coins. For example, if you have four types of coins with the given value 8, 3, 1, 2, respectively, uh, you can make change for three units or three dollars or three uh, value, whatever the value is, uh, in three ways, one, 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 two, and three. Uh, so I'm already kind of recognizing that this is like a combination problem, which is something I kind of struggle with, to be honest. Um, and the order here doesn't matter. So like a one, two is the same as a two, one. So that's something to keep, to keep in mind. Um, and the thing we're returning is the number of ways to make change. Uh, so this is this is under dynamic programming, right? So yeah, I think I could actually do a, like a recursive call on this effectively. Um, so I'm imagining that I would want to somehow memoize this. So I think that I could do like a, I'm going to do like a hash map. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing memoization. That way you can save memory on um, things you've already calculated. All right, so I am back. Uh, I took some time to really like di to digest this problem, and I found a really good video on uh, YouTube. Uh, this is called the Coin Change Problem: Dynamic Programming by O'Neill Code. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, so that was really helpful in understanding exactly the pattern to recognize here and the uh, the way to execute on it. Uh, and the one thing that I was doing, because so there's kind of these two ideas in dynamic programming, which is like the bottom up or the top down. I was trying this really top down approach and this problem does not really lend well to that approach because you really are building up to um, to the amount that we're looking for. Um, to summarize what I found in the video, effectively you can create an array that starts out um, with a length that is one more than n. Uh, and the reason is because you're gonna actually use the um, indices as the coin um, totals. Uh, so you start with zero, but then you have like um, zeros all the way through here. All right. And, and the idea here is you look at each coin um, individually, as well as the amounts individually. So what I mean by that is at the, uh, let's say we have um, C equals to one, two, three, which we've seen before. Um, here we and we have an n of like five, or sort of four, four. So that means our array should be a total of five. So that's how, that's what the array will look like to start off with. Um, you're gonna go through each coin one at a time. And so let's start with one for a second. So we'll say um, our coin is one. And then we iterate through the possible values. And we start with one, because that's the, basically the, um, the least that it could be is you start with the amount of the coin. Um, starting with zero doesn't make sense. Um, so, uh, by the way, zero signifies that you've completed um, an entire set of coins and the sum has become zero. That's why it's the value one. Anyway, so we have our i is equal to one. So we're looking at this one here. And what we do is we take that i, which is the total, the sum total of coins, um, and then we subtract the coin from it and that will be zero. And then we look at the zeroth position and then we add that to that position, in this case one. Um, and then you look and then you increment this to the next one, uh, all the way up to five, of course. Uh, sorry, four being the, the total. Um, and so you will go to two, two minus one is one. You look at the one position and you just add that here. And you'll eventually find that these are all one during, during the first pass. Then you increment this to two, and in this case you start out with i. You start at the two position because again you don't need to start with one because two minus one is is, is pointless. Um, so you start with two, and then you will say okay two minus two is zero, and then you go to the zero spot which is one, and you add that to the total that's already in there. So you're storing this total over and over. Uh, so that would be two. Um, you go this. This will go to three. Then three minus the coin two will leave you one, so you go to the one index and you add that here. That's two, 
And then lastly, you're at coin three, three minus that is zero, and then that becomes two. Uh, and if you keep doing this, so first we'll need to set up that array. So let's call this store, and there'll be a new array of size n plus one. And I'm gonna fill them with zeros. Uh, and I'll make sure to set the first to a one, so just in case, let's console log that, just so we can see what we're, we're dealing with here. Okay, so there's my ones with all the zeros, uh, appropriate to the, the length of, appropriate to the number, the last number is basically the, the number we're looking for. And we're we're aggregating uh, up to that. I'm just gonna just close these out. I don't know why, why are these so visible? I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, so let's cut that out. And then we will loop through each coin. And then within that, we loop again through each um, value. I guess you could do it both ways because you're just looping within a loop, but uh, that's how you do it. That's a, a convenient way of doing it. So I'm going to say a four. I'm going to say const coin of C. Then within that, I say four. I'm going to say let I equals uh, coin because that's where we start out. We don't care about anything under uh, any values under that. Um, and we say store dot length. And we do I plus plus. And this will give us our value. Maybe I could call this the. Um, uh, total uh, change like the change total so I'm just be like really clear All right okay so what do we do well we look at the value um, where we get basically look, look look for the remainder so let's do remainder that equals a total minus the coin that'll be the remainder uh, and we need to look up that remainder that's already in the array, which will be um, some position to the left. So you've already calculated it effectively. Um, and so that will look like store remainder. And then what do we do with that? Well, we want to add that to the current indices of the total. So that would be store total plus plus that. And you do that for all of the totals growing up then you go to the next coin and you do that again and so you'll be doing like this running um, summation so let's look at what the store looks like at the end of that it looks something like this so this last value is basically what we're looking for so that's the expected output here um, and what that's effectively doing is you're you're com you're computing all the combinations at the very early earliest stages that is like really easy to calculate which is like the ones and the twos and then you build off of that to four and fives you build off of that because of the previous information that you've learned and eventually you build up to the very end which is what you're looking for so um i'm looking to return store n or you can do store minus you know store at length minus one uh, but that's the same thing so let's run this okay and let's uh, submit so what was you know i thought this was I thought it was challenging, and it was challenging in a sense because I think the way I think of these dynamic problems is a little bit too top heavy. So it's, you know, it's top down. It tends to be. So I think that I've learned a good amount from this, even though like this code doesn't look very big. You know, it's very, it's, you know, it seems pretty simple in for you know, with foresight uh, or with hindsight, I should say. The um, the thing I'm learning is definitely to take these dynamic programming. Uh, the, the the approach for this should be bottom up. That tends to be kind of like an easier way of doing things, just because like this like base case of um, you know store equal one and you just going from one to two is like so much more concrete and understandable. So my recommendation is definitely go bottom up. Um, anyway, that's it for me for today, and I hope to see you next time.